Welcome back, Blade fans. We've got something that just hit the market today, and I wanted to bring it to you, and you might be interested. It is a first for Riot, and um, it seems to be a growing trend. I'm doing a bit of an unboxing because I am impressed for about a $120 knife, I think, from Riot which is inexpensive budget level for them. We have a, a very nice presentation in a hard magnet uh, lidded, uh, lidded uh, case. <clears throat> there, we're going to show you that in a moment. Got the microfiber cloth. You get all kinds of goodies. You get the uh, little Riot uh, sticker. Usually, they also give you a rubber one. <clears throat> it might have fallen out of the box. And uh, very tough and snug in there in this uh, dense foam. And uh, extra hardware in here, by the way, an extra spring and some screws. Just, I think, about three items. I'm not going to show that to you, but hard box. And uh, this is the PLXT. And um, you can screenshot that. Those are some of the specs. It uh, doesn't give you everything. The overall length we've got there and the blade length we've got. There it is. This one in a copper PVD and black micarta. Very nice micarta. No threads uh, showing or anything like that. There's your blank for your left hand uh, clip. There is your clip. It is uh, not deep carry. It is uh, set kind of like uh, the way the clips used to be before we got too into the deep carry thing. So you may like the fact that there's a bit of a round headed screw there that you can grab to pull it out of your pocket. It's not a large knife, as you can tell. Just fits my medium-large hand. A little bit of jimping here. And it's uh, this is kind of a cool color, I think. Um, I was going to get another one, and then uh, somebody wanted this one from White Mountain. And then uh, Justin told me that they didn't want it, and they changed their mind. So uh, I grabbed it. Nitro V Steel. And here is the trick thing about it. There is your pivot. And there is me pushing in on the pivot and dropping the blade. Now, it is a thick little knife for a three-inch blade. I'm told, uh, looking at a description on Blade HQ, that the reason is that this mechanism, this uh, pivot lock, requires a thicker um, breadth, if you will, on the uh, handles. So uh, let's do some quick measurements. You already saw most of the measurements there, the blade and the overall. It is, um, let's not do millimeters, let's do inches. 0.6 inches, okay, uh, across the handle. And that is a thicker blade of 0.15, which is 3.7 millimeters. And you already got the overall length, which is 6.9 inches. And you got the blade length, which is three inches. And do we have the weight? Yeah, the weight is 4.4 .4 ounces. So I'll shoot all of that up on the screen for you as well, just to make it easy reading. And a uh, very fidgety knife, though, because you can open it by pressing the pivot <laughs> and snapping it out. Uh, if you ever try to get your hand around a tripod and do this, it's a little different than holding it out in front of your belly and doing it. But that's the general idea. Double thumb studs. So... Left hand, right hand, easy peasy. And 
They didn't tell me what the grind is. It feels flat. And uh, I'm going to call it flat. Looking straight down the barrel there. Um, I'm going to call it a flat grind. Pretty thick stock and um, yet uh, a high grind. I'm not sure I've got any paper around. We can try a paper cut. We'll give this a try. Let's see what we get. Can't remember if I stropped this up or not. Yeah. Whoa. You know, that is slicey for a short, somewhat thick blade. Get off of there. Okay. It's got some jimping on the backspacer, which appears to be like a G10 or something. It's not a micarta. Again, it's fairly smooth in and out of the pocket, but it's a pretty tight clip. Can be adjusted, you know, a little bendy action there. You can put it over there on the left side. It's ventilated, so uh, you got your holes going all the way through. Therefore, no need to do any weight relieving on the inside. It is a visible uh, frame, and you're not going to see any liner lock there because the uh, release mechanism and lock mechanism is all in the middle. Now, just dropped it on the floor. Let me recover from that. I was going to show you <laughs> before I dropped it what a nice lockup it had, and uh, I went to transfer it and missed. It is just rock solid. And here's the other thing I was about to show you is we've got a double lock there. And usually when you have a double lock, like on some of the Hogue knives and so forth, and you push on the button, you get a little rattle there. You get a little wiggle. None on this one. None. So it doesn't matter whether you got the lock on or off. And you need to be pretty definite on the button to close it, and you need to push pretty hard. If you push just a little, it wiggles, but it won't close. So the button, the pivot lock button, is ever so slightly above the surface. And there is a raised portion on the handle scale that is kind of a surround, as you can see. We've got a pivot adjustment still in the middle. I haven't tried messing with it. And it is on bearings because it is just ultra smooth, very smooth. Very, very, very smooth. Well, let's do a compare. Um, for this compare, I brought out something I haven't handled in a while. This is the TAC EDC from Concept, designed by Mikkel Willemsen, and it's a button lock. And it's about the same size. It's just a little bit longer blade. And uh, there is a button lock that is pretty good because you need to definitely give it a press in a concerted effort, not that it's a strong spring or anything, uh, in order to close it. And I like that. <clears throat> Some of the button locks, you just need to give it a very light press and it begins closing. So um, it's kind of a cool knife. So for size comparison and the fact that it's a button lock, we've got that. Okay. So although it's also small, the... Um, Overall length, it's about half inch longer, maybe, maybe a little more than that. And we got a blade. Blade, what's the blade on this? Blade on this one is like a three and an eighth. So it's a bit longer in the blade and it is uh, longer in the handle with an interesting glass breaker on the pommel and is it a switchable clip yeah switchable clip too titanium you don't often see that switchable clip on the titanium so that's the tack edc but just for compare and the fact that it's a more of a traditional 
button lock. Well, if we put this guy up against the RAT1, you're going to see quite a bit of size difference. Check that out. Full size knife, you know, almost four inch blade to three and three quarter ish, 3.8, something like that. Um, no compare. Not a contest, however. So if you like kind of a chonky uh, EDC knife, I feel it definitely feels good in the hand. You may not like the fact that it's 0.6 across the handle. Um, but if that doesn't bother you and it doesn't bother you carrying it in your pocket, and you're looking for something slimmer, you may want to pass. Um, I think the lock mechanism is great. I'd love to see, I think this is probably kind of testing the waters for Riot. I'd like to see something, you know, about three and three quarter ish would be really nice. And maybe a slightly different blade style is what you call a drop point with a swedge. And um, steel's good, Nitro V. A lot of people using Nitro V these days, manufacturers, that is. And even custom knife makers have got some beautiful blades in Nitro V from uh, uh, Morgan Cohen's Customs. So let me know what you think. It's sharp out of the box, and uh, it is a three inch blade. And if I didn't mention it, it does have a usable choil area there as well. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to give this video a like and a subscribe. This old sword, back soon.